Hi, Dr. Mark here from Natural Health. Hope you're having a great day. Sorry we're a little late. Uh, we had late patients um, as uh, we're, we're getting busier and then the uh, with the um, sun staying up later, people are coming in later, so just a little late. That's okay, it's a little bit of information. So today we're talking about sun health and importance, uh, kind of the, 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 the theme in April is spring allergies. And again, I want to apologize for missing last week. So we had to do that and that's okay too. So anyway, sun health is important uh, and uh, it's, it's very maligned. Uh, uh, there's been several, you know, uh, big deal MDs talking about all well, the skin cancer and all that kind of stuff caused by the sun. Well, it's not caused by the sun, it's caused by the environment. So we'll get into that uh, as we go through. Of course, I'm Dr. Mark. I've been here 40 years now and uh, a lot of experience in handling all kinds of fun things. So uh, doing well there. Um, so vitamin E is called the sunshine vitamin. Does a lot of good thing, enhances the immune system, uh, required for absorption of calcium. Uh, another thing that's required for absorption of calcium is an acid pH, which most people don't have because they eat too many carbs. That's a whole nother night. We'll talk about that some other time. Needed for healthy thyroid function. Uh, helps prevent depression and anxiety. So a lot of people that get depressed in the winter time uh, are suffering from vitamin D issues. And essential for neuromuscular function. So I mean, vitamin D is just important for lots of things. We have the signs of deficiency here. Uh, so, uh, you know, muscle weakness, um, malformation of bones, lots of things you can look through, leukemia, all kinds of things. You know, vitamin D is just so important uh, and causes uh, of deficiency uh, or causes there metabolic abnormalities, again, malabsorption, indigestion, all those kind of things that are normal uh, with problems of, of, of vitamin deficiency. Um, I don't know if there's one on there or not. Uh, low stomach acid, again, that's really important. Again, we can kind of talk about that for a, a minute. And then um, regular use of sunblock. Now, that's an important one. It causes deficiency uh, because, again, you're stopping the sun from activating the vitamin D, which I'm talking about here in a minute. Another one that's really important, people don't, it's not listed here, is medication. Medication screws up the liver, screws up the body's ability to absorb oil soluble vitamins. And so then people have vitamin D deficiency. Uh, and that's never mentioned anywhere. Uh, we have a like handout on that, but uh, you never hear that from the MDs. Uh, and the medication has caused a lot of problems, especially if you're on you know, more than two. So anyway, um, lots of important things that vitamin D does. This is a real important slide, I think, because uh, the, uh, it's showing that the sun has a lot to do with activating and getting vitamin D3 into the body uh, and it's so important to realize that the sun is not to cause a skin cancer uh, it's your body's inability for the immune system to work correctly probably from lack of vitamin D <laughs> and to mix toxins and everything else that these uh, malformed cells get out of control and cause skin cancer but that's again due to all the chemicals and all the other problems in there the sun has been around forever, as long as human beings have been around, of course. So uh, people have, we haven't all died of skin cancer. And so if some people have more problems as they have fairer skin. Yes, that's true. But the, you know, to, to avoid sun with sunblock is, is almost crazy. And to use sunblock, the other thing is a lot of sunblocks only have uh, the UVA uh, the uh, sunblock, so the UV, or, sorry, the UVB sunblock, so the UVA gets in there and causes a deeper burn, uh, and you still don't get the vitamin D or the vitamin D activation. So really important to understand what sunblocks actually do. So we never use sunblocks; we just use coconut oil uh, on the body and try, you know, of course, limit your sun exposure in the in the beginning parts of the spring summer, and then you know, just common sense, get a nice brown tan going. And then vitamin, uh, use the, uh, the uh, um, uh, coconut oil afterwards, after sun tanning, so that you, you keep that oil on there. And also don't take showers right after that. You know, kind of wait till the next day. Let your body absorb those good oils uh, that, that the sun is helping with. And of course, the liver has to be involved. These liver enzyme pathways. So of course, everybody just assumes that if you take a handful of D3, synthetic D3 from whatever junk source, you, you get it you know, cheap vitamin places, if the liver's just going to take care of it, well, what if the liver's not working well? Most people's liver are toxic anyway. So, uh, a lot of problems there. Uh, calcidiol is the form measured in the blood, which is usually low. 
you know, and so that's, you probably have heard of 25 OH or hydroxy vitamin D, that's what you normally see on the blood test when the doctor says you're low on D, vitamin D. Well, is it from lack of sun exposure? Is it lack of the source of D3? You know, the other sources that come from your food, which are oil soluble vitamins, saturated fat, has a lot of good vitamin D in it, cod liver oil, all those good old things. But is the liver digesting and absorbing it correctly? Is it going through the liver? Most of the time, no. And that's why people have even problems with the kidney stone, or sorry, gallbladder stones, all that kind of stuff. That system's not working right. It's overloaded, it's toxic. I'll talk about that in a little bit. And then, of course, you don't get that. Then it has to go through other functions to turn into to calcitriol, which is the active form of vitamin D that does the good works in the body. That cal uh, calcitriolic acid is, is an inactive form. So this is really good, uh, quick little uh, understanding of how vitamin D actually works, the body, uh, and why it's so important from the slide before. Again, all these, these great things that vitamin D does. And another interesting thing I saw on this one, have you ever heard of vitamin D2? Well, there's a D1, there's other ones, and you need the whole source of vitamin D, the whole plant or animal uh, food that gives you, which again, we're back to your oil sources, and you get the oil sources, and then the sun changes those sources into D3, which goes into that pathway if the liver is working correctly. So a lot of reasons why this number is low, even if you're taking D3. Uh, so uh, again, uh, really important to understand that. And of course, the synthetic forms of D3, a cheap little pill, that's not food. That's not what the body needs to have all this stuff work correctly. Um, vitamin D synthesis in February, of course, you know, we're in the Midwest and it's kind of unlikely you're going to get much there. Really, there's no hardly any place in the country in February where you're going to get vitamin D absorption. So suntan beds are kind of a way of doing that, used extensively. Uh, but, you know, anyway, important to realize that, you know, if you're not out in the sunlight, you're not activating vitamin D. Why most people have colds and flus and junk like that at the end of the winter. Uh, before they get out in the sun in the summer or summertime or early spring or late spring there. So uh, again, we're talking about allergies too here a little bit this month. And then we talked about the leaky gut thing. We see that a lot. And uh, we talked about that last month too. So leaky gut is real important to understand how these bugs and things get into the body. But vitamin D, again, it helps this to work. And if this thing's not, if this system's not working right, your gut, then you're not going to absorb the D anyway. It's not going to work right, even the foods that have vitamin D in there. So it's important that all these things work correctly, and that's never addressed. When you have a blood test that says you're low on, uh, then they said, the doctor, oh, we just take a lot of D3. Well, you, you, you know, what does that mean? So anyway, um, the buck explanation for the explanation of the body can handle buckets worth of snot and mucus in the lymphatics, and most of the time, in most people, that bucket is full already. It was already toxic. They had sinus drainage and allergies, dripping nose, and all that. The sinuses are an overflow for the liver. When the liver's toxic, the lymphatics back up, and then it drains out the sinuses. And so people take antihistamines to stop that drainage, and just makes the problem worse. Makes the liver worse. The liver has to deal with all that stuff. And uh, even something like breast cancer. Breast cancer, a lot of time, lymphatics aren't draining because of the pressure of the bra. It's all kind of things that are fairly simple to think through, but are never talked to people about. Never understood about. And it, the medics just want to treat the symptom to, of, of that. So that's, that's just a, a poor way. That's why we're in all these problems with diabetes, heart problems, cancer. Even this COVID thing basically is a lack of an understanding of how the immune system works. Uh, so there's so many problems that I think are hopefully come out with this disaster called the COVID thing. So uh, Dr. Chip's up next. I think I've talked enough and uh, I better not say any more before I get too much trouble. So I'll let Dr. Chip take over. Have a great evening, and if we don't see you, have a great Easter. That's uh, it's Holy Week this week. Hard to believe that it's already Easter, but hope they won't snow that day. Mm -hmm. So have a great one. I can shift and take over. Okay, okay great. So a lot, of, a lot of good information. Again, we're ca talking about sun, vitamin D, uh, spring, you know, allergies, all that. And so we want to make sure to help you understand and realize there's a different side, again, a different side of the coin or a different perspective or picture here. And so again, I'm Dr. Chip, and we'll, we'll keep going. So again, uh, why the sun is important, and why, uh, again, it's good for our health and well-being, is that, again, with the sleep cycle, our circadian rhythm, we have different rhythms that help us to be able to sleep more efficiently, 
And the sun is a big influence on that. And so just like when you're getting prepared for bed and you're going, you're going to bed at night, you don't want bright lights in your room because your body is actually trying to sense whether it's time to go to sleep or to wake up. And that's actually based on a, the glands of your body, one being the pineal gland, helping to actually notice different light exposure. Uh, and again, that can be even from your sight or even your body sensing there's light there too. Uh, again, better mood. Again, that would be more uh, serotonin. Uh, so again, when that sun hits you uh, or is you know uh, shining on you on the body there, and that skin, you can kind of feel the warmth. You can kind of see the, the brightness there. I get a lot of times when people say, oh, I just wish that the sun would come out. It's because they're getting that that's chemical uh, release there too. And that helps to, you would say, calm the, the body there and bring it to more of an ease. And again, that's just kind of based on that chemical response there too. Uh, it says, sun worship to sun dread, you erase good and bad. Uh, so again, sun worship, again, uh, back in way in the days there, people used to worship the sun. Uh, again, like we got sun gods and all that because they knew the power and benefits of it. They knew to respect it. Uh, and like Dr. Mark explained there too, is that yes, again, it's great to have sun exposure. We need to have that in order to help, you know, vitamin D synthesize, activate all that. It helps our bodies to, uh, you know, say clean. Um, sunlight is a very good way to uh, clean the surface of our skin. Uh, then, and of course too, nowadays we're wearing clothes, we're inside a lot. That's why we take showers all the time, uh, or baths or anything like that, just to help clean our bodies. But again, sun exposure is very cleansing for the body there too. Uh, and again, the reason why it says good and bad is that you, the sun is great for our health, but we have to again respect it. It's kind of like you would say, you, uh, you have to respect it or else it will be used against you. And the sun doesn't care who you are, it will again, burn you if you're out there too long or your body is not able to adapt to it. Uh, so again, just another thing to be aware of. Now, the what I'm going back to here too is that the autonomic nervous system, again, are part of the, the nervous system that controls and coordinates many of our vital functions of our body uh, involuntarily. And so we're not thinking about part of like, you know, say digestion, breathing, immunity, heart rate, sensory organs, again, the system that controls all your involuntary uh, actions. And so why we, I brought, bring this up there too is that with sunlight, again, it helps our bodies to bring that system back in ease. Anytime we look at the sun, we feel the sun, again, summertime, all that, we get in this better state of mind, this better mood, and again, that's starting to help to balance out your nervous system, your autonomic nervous system. And so it's helping with a lot of these different things there too. Uh, and again, uh, that's important not only for vitamin D, you know, sun, all that, uh, but kind of like we said, kind of the allergy part, we'll, we'll kind of explain that too. Uh, and so this is a diagram here explaining more of, again, different modes of the, the nervous system. Now the autonomic nervous system, again, it's more of the one that's involuntary control. Uh, it's helping to control and coordinate things. Now these two different systems here, these are just two different branches of that system. So again, the sympathetic nervous system, kind of more your fight, flight, flee, uh, things that rev you up. Uh, just like, you know, if there was a, a snake in the corner of a room, you might want to jump or you might have a reaction there. That's your sympathetic nervous system kind of getting into action there. Now the parasympathetic nervous system, that's usually when you, again, you're real hungry, you see some good food, you're smelling some good smells, that's starting to put your mode, or you're putting your nervous system back in parasympathetic mode. So again, it's just your body's way of kind of balancing. Now a lot of times is that many people get stuck in one of these states and they can't really get back. Many, most of the time, it's the sympathetic. It's the one that kind of revs up. So a lot of, a lot of times people say, well, I just can't relax or I uh, am not very good at relaxing or I uh, am worry a lot or I feel overly stressed all the time, stuff like that. It means that you're, you're kind of riding the system too much 
and that you're not allowing your body to get more rested back in the relaxed mode there too. And so either being in one of these states, that can cause the body to be unbalanced. And why that's important to know is that an unbalanced body, coming back to the autonomic nervous system here, what does that influence? All these different processes, all these different systems, all these different actions of the body. So again, when that's off, that's really hard to balance. And we get back in balance, then we're able to, to function properly. Now it says, the inability to adapt to stress causes the ANS, the autonomic nervous system, to go from a balance to an unbalanced, unbalanced, leading to dis-ease. Now the three ways that can happen, again, trauma, again, if you're, you know, you know, you say uh, having too many falls or you're, you know, uh, working out too much or anything like that, that can be issues. Toxins, again, from the environment, uh, foods, other stuff like that, uh, poisons, all that. Uh, and then thoughts. And again, these are different things that can influence the body and, uh, and impact the, in a way that throws it un or throws it off or keeps it unbalanced. And then when it happens like that, again, we start noticing pain or symptoms and a dis-ease of the body. Something is off. Now again, we're trying to make sure to get your, your body back in balance so it's able to come back to health. So an analogy here is that Oh, going back to this too. Now, what you would say is that people talk about allergies and allergy season this, allergy season that, uh, but really, it's just more of something is getting unbalanced in your body. Your body's having a hard time to adapt to something, and that could be a change in weather, it could be a change in anything like that. And so, really, is that when you start noticing a symptom, that means the body got kind of off balance, and that's okay. You have to, you know, just get kind of work to bring it back in balance. And just like uh, kind of saying is that your body can be sort of like an electrical machine. Uh, an analogy here is a car and a battery. Now, the car can have really good, you know, parts. It can have great tires. It can have a great motor. It can have, you know, perfect gas. It can be all filled up, all, all tuned up. The windshield wipers are working well everything. But if it doesn't have a battery, and doesn't have an electrical input to make it go or make it start, then that car is not moving anywhere. And so that's kind of more of that nervous system way of seeing it, more of getting that body back in balance. So when you're able to have a properly functioning battery, a re uh, you know, something that's able to power the car, uh, then you can actually help to, you know, run the car better. And that's kind of more referring to our brain and bodies. Uh, so I think, again, that is it for tonight. Again, hope you learned some good information. Now, again, you can always follow us at Natural Health Quincy IL at Facebook, YouTube, Variety on, and Instagram. Again, subscribe to our email list at naturalhealthquincy.com. Uh, we uh, are located at 2000 Jefferson Street in Quincy, Illinois. The number is 217-228-2040. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, we'll stay tuned for more. Again, apologies for the, the late uh, go on tonight's health shot. Again, having a, a death in the family, but every, uh, it's all okay. Uh, but again, have a, have a uh, happy Easter, happy Easter weekend here, and uh, we'll see you next week. So thank you so much.